What's good, Wager World? It's your boy, Five Star in Vegas, broadcasting live as always from beautiful Summerlin, Nevada, and with my co host, my guy, the only Sacramento Kings fan that I know. What's good, Spreaders? How are you this morning? Man, I, I'm excited. Uh, we've been doing really well. You know, I just told you beforehand, hey, you know, things are going well over here uh, in Northern <laughs> California. We've been uh, doing a good job, right? Using discretion when yeah. we need to, attacking the player props when we need to. We don't need to get involved with the side or the total every single night. Uh, and I feel like this has been a rough NBA playoffs, uh, and I felt that we've navigated it pretty well. How you doing? I'm doing great, man. Another beautiful morning in, in Sumlin, man. I could never complain when uh, I walk outside. Every time I'm, if I'm a little down from, you know, other circumstances in life that, you know, come about, I always can look down the street at the mountains and look in the backyard at the palm trees. And, I, you know, a smile touches my face. And, of course, look at my beautiful children. So I can't complain at all, man. Um, really feeling good about yesterday. Uh, we didn't do the show, but we both played. Uh, first quarter, Jalen Brown, he had it in like the first three minutes of the first quarter. So yeah. that was the only bet I made yesterday on NBA. Made it for a nice little amount. And it felt really good to be through in like five minutes. And you cashed it now. I could just enjoy the game and kick back and relax and don't care about the results. To be fair, the game was through at about that point. Uh, as yeah. Well. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, yeah. Credit to the Boston Celtics for bouncing back. Um, I, I'll be honest, I throw that game out the window. That game yeah, I, do too. To me. I think game one yeah. is a little more uh, instructive. Of course, Embiid missed that one, but um, I don't know. I'm not necessarily ready to say that this is the, you know, the Celtics are back and they're going to win this. Let's see them do it uh, in a tough, close game. And of course, that atmosphere in Philadelphia is going to be a lot different. All right. So we missed yesterday. So we have a little bit to talk about. Um, let's start with the Heat. Um, they've Fell in game two to the New York Knicks. Jimmy Butler did not play. Oh boy, this has been a tough postseason with all these injuries and these guys in and out. I expected him to play in that game. Um, so I was surprised when he did not. And I was also surprised that the New York Knicks struggled so much to get that win. Right? It was <laughs> almost series over there. Uh, you know, the Knicks came through there at the end. Um but that game was a lot closer than I thought it should have been. What do you think here about the Knicks and the Heat? Another ticket cashed. You can trust Bolster. Miami um, is uh, just a perfect team for the postseason uh, due to uh, their veteran leadership, um, due to their head coach. Um, they're almost like a, a good NFL team, you know, like the Patriots or somebody who know how to keep the game close, make you play their game. And uh, that's what Miami specializes in. Uh, they could just throw in anybody. If they picked them up, they went through so much just to be a part of that Heat team, as we talked about, about them having to have a certain amount of body fat and uh, having to uh, meet certain conditioning uh, spectrums that are uh, set by the godfather, Pat Riley, that whenever the guys come in, <laughs> they're ready to play. Um, look, Caleb Martin, I haven't seen him look like that since Nevada. He was a hell of a um, college basketball player. He's been um, the last couple of years just having to, you know, play D and uh, hit a couple of open threes in order to stay in the league. But he plays with such ferocity and such hustle that he always was getting men to steal with Miami. And uh, he was able to fall into the Jimmy Butler role for them. He put up 22 and reminded people, hey, he can't score the ball, man. He is a good player. And he was a four for eight from the three point line as well. So a uh, really good game by uh, Caleb Martin. Uh, they have another kid, Highsmith. I don't even know where this guy comes from. I'm really good. You know me. I'm a college yeah. expert. I've never heard of Haywood Highsmith in my life. So I had to go look him up. He came from some small Division three school. Great job by Pat R Riley, Alonzo uh, Morning, and um, also just that uh, scouting department for, for Miami. Miami's just a strong organization, man. Pat Riley learned everything and cut his teeth with the Lakers. Uh, coming from the film room, as they showed on that do that uh, little docu series that they had about the Lakers, he was a grinder, grinded his way up, got another shot at fame because he had, used to be a star basketball player. Then he went to the Knicks and helped that organization, and then they picked the right guy with the Heat um, by getting my, uh, Pat Riley to become their president, and they haven't looked back since. That's why they're one of the most solid organizations, even though people don't remember Miami is one of the newer franchises in the league. Uh, they just joined maybe 20, 30 years ago, but 
the whole time they've been in the league, they've been ran by the Godfather, and he knows what he's doing. And as I told you, I don't expect the Knicks to win maybe one more game. I think Miami wins both games at home. I think the Knicks come home and win one. I think Miami finishes in, in Miami. All right, we'll see how that turns out. Um, <clears throat> a game that I was disappointed to watch, uh, we cash, but I, I could have used I could have gone without <laughs> that money. Uh, the uh, Lakers, uh, plus four and a half there. LeBron James got uh, the prop home that we yep. put out. Anthony Davis went over all his numbers, and the Lakers fell short there at the end. And I know everyone wants to blame Jordan Poole and – Rightfully so, that was a bad shot. But the Warriors should not have been in that situation at home to begin with. Uh, you know, they had a 14-0 run to even get in that situation. Um, yeah. yeah. Tough scene there. I think the Warriors bounce back tonight. Uh, but overall, I'm a little worried that my least favorite team is going to advance here uh, over my guy, Steph Curry. Uh, what do you – I mean, I think they, they rush – They they're going to – we'll talk about it in a bit, but – uh, what did you think of game one? Exactly how I expected. The Warriors were a little tired. They still put up a fight because they were at home. Uh, more from Jordan Poole than we've seen in the past. But still, it's a disconnect between him, that team, and the uh, head coach. It's like they're trying to reel him in because he's one of those guys that kind of like Antonio Brown, not as far as in his antics, but as far as in like how when Ryan Clark said he told Coach Tomlin that when he gave him some money <laughs> – that guy's going to be something else. You know, Don't when you pay him, and that's what I feel about Jordan Poole. Like, he already was a big character guy, you know, talked a lot. Damon Lillard said he talked more than anybody on the Warriors team. He was telling Draymond and Steph when he first started playing, like, who is this guy? You know, like, like you better tell your boy who I am type stuff, you know. So Jordan Poole is already an a-hole, and now he has the money. I don't know if you saw uh, some of the footage that is – just got out of uh, how he shrugged, you know, uh, Draymond tried to give him some dap um, during the Sacramento series, and he walked right past him, you know, and uh, Curry had to come check him about that and tell him, like, hey, man, we're a team. Don't do that. But I don't know if Jordan Poole's going to last, man. Talent can only take you so far. I think in the summer they make a, a decision. I think they probably keep Draymond and, and trade Jordan Poole just simply for the fact that if they know if they let go of Draymond, he's going to the Lakers. And now the Lakers are already strong. And now this is another guy that can play bully ball, but now also has the smarts and adds more defense to that team. What we see in Darwin Ham is a hell of a coach, as you see from uh, the fall of Milwaukee. Another one of those situations, kind of like how Dabo was with the Bills, where he was silently bigger than most people thought in that locker room, you know? So, um, the Warriors at a crossroad with Jordan Poole, I feel like, and that shot was terrible. And uh, if you was watching uh, NBA <laughs> TV, they had a little live thing going, like some players on there. And Shannon Fry was just, he was so pissed that, that he shot that. He was like, that's a terrible shot. And your boy <laughs> Halliburton was on there as well. And Halliburton was like, that's a great shot. I would have took that shot too. And Shannon Fry said, that's why you're sitting here with me. <laughs> 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 so I think your Kings made the right choice by taking uh De'Aaron Fox and his competitiveness against Halliburton, who's just out there hooping. <laughs> but um, yeah, as far as in the game, Lakers uh just too powerful and too much in the in the paint for them. Jared Vanderbilt, Houston kid, great job, of Steph Curry. You can't stop Steph Curry, but you can make his life hard. And with his ability to stay with him. Uh, through screens, run with him, had a speed to stay with him, but also bring that link that being 6'10 is uh, really giving Curry some different looks. Um, the Warriors just don't have the squad they used to have. And what people don't understand is they're always saying Steph had so much success against LeBron in the past. Each time, Steph had the best team by far. This is the first time LeBron has had the best team uh, when these two guys have faced off, and I really do think the Lakers – uh, roster is better this season than the Warriors. I love I it. Warriors. Kyrie Irving yeah. slander today. Thank you. Yeah, hey, Thank man, it's you. the truth. I'm so it's over it's Kyrie Irving. Hey, it's the truth, man. He had a better team. The best team that he had, well, the year that he had Kyrie is the one year that they won. Remember, Kyrie was hurt the other two times that they faced, they faced each other in the championship when he was at Cleveland. 
But um, he was available. I mean, he tore his kneecap or something in one of those series. He was beginning to play, and then he did something to his kneecap and didn't play the rest of the series. But the one series he did play, they did win. So, you know, I can't say that's the one time that LeBron did beat Steph was, you know, Kyrie hitting the shot. So I'm not necessarily speaking about Kyrie. I'm speaking about the roster as a whole. Um, the Lakers have a better team right this time. Down. Yeah, I know. I know. Kyrie going to go to Phoenix, like you said, and they're going to kill stuff next year. They basically get him for free if they trade him for DeAndre Ayton. What a bum he Man. is. Yeah, he a straight bum. It's always he's no, but Kyrie's not under contract after this year. Yeah, but he's a free if, agent. If Phoenix, if, if Phoenix wants to fit him under the cap, oh, do it. Yeah, do it that with Dallas a, 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 a trade and yeah, yeah, I could definitely see that. Him, yeah. yeah, I could see that because Cuban had already wanted Ayton anyway, and he yeah. he fit way better with Luca. than I don't know what the hell they was doing with that. I think that was just some sabotage. Like, whatever we got to do to hate on the Lakers, let's do it <laughs> to keep Kyrie from going over there because that didn't even make sense putting those two together. I, I, yeah, so I, sometimes I think these owners get just get blinded by the star potential. Right? Yeah, and maybe just, so. You know, on paper, oh, Kyrie and Luca, we're going to be unstoppable. Cuban better be careful. He almost lost Luca with that, um, <laughs> with that choice because Luca did not look too thrilled after Kyrie got there. Like, you know, like we don't need yeah. him. We need some more other type guys. Don't bring him over and taking the ball from me. Like, what are you doing? And then did you see Jason Kidd on uh all on uh uh all the smoke? No. Man, he said uh I know that Mark Cuban doesn't like to hear this, but uh <laughs> I love to get guys paid, and I definitely feel like I got Jalen Brunson paid. <laughs> I said, you better be careful. That's the talk that got Isaiah Thomas fired. <laughs> uh, well, you remember Isaiah was telling everybody, like, I'm just trying to make get all these young brothers paid. When he said that, he never had a job anymore. <laughs> well, Isaiah might have been for different reasons there, but um... oh, he had a couple girlfriends in the office. <laughs> Oh, bro, he made Udoka look nice and monogamous. He did a lot. Hey, boy, Udoka, I know one thing. Udoka better stay at the club in Houston. <laughs> Jump into tonight. How's that? Yeah. Um, yeah, let's get on tonight. Warriors, uh, are, in my mind, they will bounce back tonight. In my mind, they will cover uh, this spread tonight. Um, but if you want to take them straight up, this is last night. Now, Mark, the 15th straight game where the mm -hmm. team, a home team loses game one. They're, they've won 15 in a row now in game two. This is straight up. This is not against the spread. Uh, right. but I, I, I might be a Warriors steamroll tonight. And we've seen this before, um, right, in game five against Memphis. Yep. Was it game five? Like, and game two. Five. This and game two. Hey, we're not going to win this one. Our main, our, our main engine's thirty-eight. Um, you know, let's send them on the bench and let these other guys get some run and head back home one-one. So, uh, I like the Warriors. I like them to cover tonight. How do you see this game going? Man, the money is ninety-three percent on the Warriors, with only seven percent people betting the Lakers tonight, and it's ran all the way up to seven uh, in some places. As you said, they might not cover, but they'll for sure win. I just don't see any way that the Warriors lose this game. You know, if they lose this game, then they're probably going to have a gentleman sweep. Um, but, hey, sometimes the books has to pay out. <laughs> and I think they're going to pay out tonight because it's going to be hard to find a ticket without the Warriors on. And it's going to be hard to fade the Warriors. There's no way that I'm going against them at home in a must-win situation. Uh, and it's mostly all about Steph Curry and Steve Kerr. So uh, those two guys always find a way to get done. And then we have a player's coach, a guy who played in the league a long time, really understands the game, and Doran Ham. And I think that Ham um, definitely is, like, pumping the brakes tonight. Like, we're going to come out and play. We're going to run. We're going to try to get one because every game matters. But if it gets out of hand early, don't be surprised if they go on the way to white flag. Uh, set AD and set LeBron for extended minutes and let them rest up for the go back to LA. And they also um, are wise enough to understand that off these blowouts, just like the Sixers, the Sixers are automatic bet at home the next game after that blowout against Boston. You no, know, it's good motivation for the team. They just got ran through. They didn't try too hard in the second half. Now Doc has a lot of stuff to coach uh, for the next game. And, and Ham is uh, a similar coach with that, with being a former player as well. 
Um, he kind of understands what motivates guys. Guys in the NBA do not like getting blown out, and they usually respond. So um, I do like the Warriors tonight. I don't know if I lay the points, but for sure, money line, I do like them. All right. Um, do you have any props for tonight's game that you're looking at? Yeah, let's go to the ball and parlay and, and get it up. Right. Yeah, NBA's got a lighter schedule for us. Quicker shows today. Ball and parlay, what do you got for us? Yeah, man, we got to roll with my Houston boy, Jerry Vanderbilt. His number's still low. It's amazingly over and under his five and a half points. Um, he's averaged uh, about 10 points the last four games. He's really became a part of their offense. And also, I'm expecting with, like I said, if the Warriors get ahead some, I think that they rest some of the older guys. So I think he think that he gets a lot of garbage run as well. Um, he's going to get probably uh, some extended minutes if the Warriors, you know, tend to take off on these guys. And in these garbage times, he'll get a couple of dunks, free throws, fouls, layups, hit a three or something. He's been pretty good from the three-point line. He's hit one um, in the last three games. They they have his stat at uh, like a minus 120 over 0.5 on the three-pointer. So if you have some extra bankroll, you can look at that. But for sure, take Vanderbilt uh, minus five and a half points. I think that he does get there. He's been playing really well of late. And um, with all the attention on AD, he's pretty much open anywhere he wants to catch the ball, whether it's at the cup or at the three-point line. It's just about him making the shots and making his free throws at a very short number at minus five and a half. And also, I threw in some tennis. I've been on the uh, Madrid Open, had a really good morning. I took uh, Karatsev this morning, and my girl Stavalinka Stavs has really turned the corner since she became a major winner. And I can't wait to see her and Siontek after Siontek smashes Kuda Monster in a little bit. I can't wait to see that. We'll get that one out uh, next show. I'm probably going to take Stab in the games, but I'm going to take uh, Borna Cornick in the men's side with the games. Uh, he's facing, um, you know, the best in the business right now, little Carlito. You know, he's number one in the world. Uh, everything in the doll used to be at his age. And uh, I really think that Cork's being a veteran, he can uh, protect the serve enough to at least – uh, prevent him from losing like 6-3, six, 6-3. Three, six, three. I think that he at least pay, uh, pushes maybe one tiebreaker and then uh, maybe loses by uh, one break in the other game. So I think the plus five and a half is the steal for Corey. He's a veteran. He plays really good in these Masters tournaments. He just won Cincinnati. All right. I'm going to go ahead and, and take the Warriors tonight. I'm not afraid about laying the points. I think they bounced back big last night. Template last night was set in Boston. And like I said, it doesn't necessarily like <laughs> if you're a, like a, a, you're on the Lakers for the series and the Warriors win by 20 tonight. I don't really think that lowers your overall um, no. view of the Lakers or would give you anything to see. Um, for example, if you like the 76ers before the game last night, I don't think what you saw last night would discourage you that much. Um, we've seen now with the rise of three point shooting, blowouts are a lot more common in the playoffs. <clears throat> That's I tell you, honestly, to me, that's the biggest drawback of the three-point era is that we have less close playoff games. Um, yeah. Because Get the roller from three like last night with the Celtics. Oh, my God. Because you're sh you're basically shooting a one and three every time instead of a one and two. And, and, and with those 50% mm -hmm. shots, teams were keeping it close, um, which meant a lot of games came down to the fourth quarter. And, and we still had great games. But I think there's way more blowouts than there used to be and that's because of the three-point line so uh, i actually do like the three-point line better because as a fan i would rather watch guards beat other guys off the dribble and do awesome layups than post moves i'm not a yeah. traditionalist in that regard like me either. <laughs> yeah, me so either. you know i'm not not down on the three-point era but i'm just saying the uh to me the biggest drawback is how easy a blowout is at the same time Comebacks are a lot easier, right? I mean, a 15-point yep. lead is nothing now. It used to be a big deal. No. So, uh, this is a long-winded way of saying I'm taking the Warriors minus six and a half. <laughs> All right, so I got Jerry Vanderbilt over five and a half points. Born a court plus five and a half games minus 140 at the ATP Madrid tomorrow morning. It's an early morning match, guys. You can bet it tonight. And spread is rolling with his Golden State Warriors minus six and a half. Hey, guys, it's been a great one. Uh, the last couple of days, we've had some good runs. Um, we've been releasing videos when we don't have the show and make sure we get the winners to you. Anything for the people before we get out of this spread? No, looking forward to an exciting game tonight, and we'll be back tomorrow. Finally, two games back on the slate tomorrow night. That'll be fun. 
I'm so glad about that. So we get two games tomorrow. Tonight, though, we have the Golden Boys, the Golden State Warriors and the Lakers. Both of them are the Golden Boys, the the two teams that uh, people had the reversible jersey on in Las Vegas. <laughs> so, man, you guys tune into the Ways of the World tomorrow. Best of luck to you all tonight.